Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we really look at what's going on in the world of the bricks. Now, in the last few months, I made a number of videos about the Russian agricultural sector and how it's now self-sufficient in food production across grains, wheat, cereals, plus in meat production, including beef, pork, poultry and even eggs. It's also expanded food production from just growing it to a full array of processing and production of finished products. Now, it uses the production of its high-quality wheat, for example, to produce a wide range of pastas. So it's no surprise to find that Russia is well on its way to developing self-sufficiency in the growing of tomatoes. I mean, this will enable them to produce a wide variety of tomato-based sauces and products, replacing the types that they once imported from places like Italy. I mean, in recent years, Russia, as part of its import substitution campaign, has initiated the expansion of its volume of tomato cultivation, which has been accompanied by a huge increase in the manufacture of finished products derived from this crop, including tomato paste, puree and sauces representing the primary output. However, although the objective of achieving self-sufficiency is growing rapidly, it's not quite fully been met. In contrast to the situation with actually with cucumbers. I mean, the importation of tomatoes still uh, represents a significant proportion of the market. It's around 35%. Now, what were the reasons for this great difficulty in achieving self-sufficiency in tomatoes compared to cucumbers? Well, in Russia, from 2019 to 2023, the production of tomato products increased by 7% from 613 to 655,000 tonnes, driven by the rising demand. The production of tomato paste and puree increased particularly significantly by 15% from 197 to 227,000 tonnes. That's according to data from Business Stat. Hello, and this is just a small selection of the various products uh, relating to tomatoes that appear in my local supermarket. As you can see, there's everything from uh, Georgian uh, products um, like Armenian lecho and pasta products, etc. So there's quite a big range there. So as you can see, no shortage at all. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me, so I'm thanking you in advance. Now, in addition to pastes and puries, the category of tomato products now also encompasses juices, drinks, various sauces and ketchup, as well as diced or whole canned tomatoes. In fact, the production of tomato products is growing, partly to, to an increase in the demand for uh, these products in home cooking and healthy eating. Now, most Russian families have access to a dacha, which is like a small holding with our animals, where you grow a variety of fruit and vegetables from the spring to the autumn. Most people go there at weekends to enjoy the fresh air, cultivate the soil, have a barbecue and a few beers, you know. Anyway, at our dacha, yeah, we have one. We grow a wide variety of fruit and veg, and we're almost self-sufficient in fruit and veg production. Almost all we produce, we bottle, pickle, freeze, or store for use throughout the winter. I mean, for example, we make all our own pasta sauce using our homegrown tomatoes, peppers, garlic, onions, and herbs. I also pickle onions, cucumbers, and beetroots. I mean, all the fruits that we grow are made into jams, pie fillings, and the veg into pickles and chutneys, as well as obviously freezing some of it. Uh, I mean, carrots and uh, freeze particularly well, as do peppers. Uh, I mean, a distinctive aspect of the tomato paste and puree production in Russia is available of their own raw materials. I mean, companies process the fresh tomatoes they're growing in their own fields and produce the contrast concentrates in industrial packaging for the retail market. I mean, for example, the Pecana company cultivates its own fields in the Astrakhan region, which ensures its constant supply of premium quality raw materials. 
It produces a wide range of tomato-based products, including a paste, a jica, which is a spicy Georgian sauce, lecho, which is an Armenian spicy sauce, which is absolutely delicious, plus other sauces, ketchup, plus mashed potato pulp and pizza sauces. And then the revenue for tomato products has increased dramatically since 2022, with a predicted increase of about 67% by 2024. It's just over a billion dollar market now. Now, the company's primary uh, revenue generator is Cross Passata Tomato Pop. It's an import substitute that's been readily increasing in popularity in Russia's I mean, this year they anticipate around 5 million units of Passata or the Puri, says Igor Morozov, who's the head of the tomato products division, that tasty product, uh, which is Picanta calls its brands. Now, he says, we're pleased to announce the launch of a new plant of Tomarina paste in the Astrakhan region. This new facility we're investing $85 million in, and it'll be a full cycle plant, and the uh, Outskirts of the plant will grow 230,000 tonnes of tomatoes per year and it will produce over 23,000 tonnes of tomato paste. I mean, it's planted 650 hectares of open ground with the highest variety of tomatoes. Yep, there's a variety of tomatoes named after that company that developed uh, specifically for making their tomato products. So Heinz tomatoes really do exist. Now, one of the problems in the market is currently a shortage of both raw materials and the factories for the production of tomato paste and products. I mean, the reverse sanctions imposed by Russia resulted in a notable reduction in the supply of tomato paste and puree from EU countries, particularly, obviously, Italy and Spain. And the capacity of Russian plants was insufficient to meet the increased demand. I mean, previously, this type of activity was not a popular choice amongst farmers. I mean, a considerable portion of tomato products uh, producers utilise pre-made paste from, uh, imported from overseas. So the high growth rates now are, are actually associated with a low base, says uh, Olga Lebaninskaya, who's a professor of statistical analysis at the Higher School Economics. She says... Now there's some competition from imported paste, but not from Europe, obviously. That comes mainly from China, Kazakhstan, Turkey and Uzbekistan. I mean, the situation with the production of domestic tomatoes is also uh, not ideal, but it's getting better. I mean, there's been... Uh, I mean, its drive to self-sufficiency uh, in 2023 was up to 65%. Well, Hello, and I'm here in a Russian supermarket and I'm taking some video of the tomato aisle. As you can see, there's quite a large selection of tomatoes available uh, of all shapes, sizes and varieties. So, as you can see, there is certainly no shortage of tomatoes at all. So, enjoy. Then. Well, and things like cucumbers, for example, growing cucumbers is reaching 95% uh, are now homegrown. So the proportion of imported tomatoes is still significant at 35%. Now, the principal suppliers of the remaining tomatoes to Russia are Azerbaijan and uh, Turkmenistan. Now, the high proportion of tomatoes can be attributed to the fact that following the imposition of sanctions in 2014, the country was prompted to consider food security and move to import substitution. And I've made a number of videos about import substitution, so if you want to know more about that, please have a look back through my catalogue. So investors initially prioritised the construction of greenhouse for cucumbers production, but given they've got the higher financial returns from cucumbers, and there was a lack of interest for investors in the tomato sector, mainly because the yield for uh, per square metre for cucumbers is about 160 kilos, while tomatoes it's uh, only 100 kilos. So you can see there's a bit of a difference. And here I am in the pasta aisle. As you can see, there is a wide range of all sorts of types uh, of pasta. Some Italian looking, some not so Italian looking. Oh. So as you can see, a big and wide range of all sorts of prices. And most of it's actually locally produced. Okay, thank you. However, 
once the the level of computer uh, of cucumbers was reached, greenhouse farms may then started to develop investments in tomato production, as in once they've saturated the market, let's look for other ways we can make money. So there's been a slight decrease in the share of greenhouse cucumbers and an increase uh, moved over to tomatoes. And I've no doubt that peppers are going to be the next uh, big thing as far as uh, that is concerned. And the objective of the cucumbers is to become self-sufficient. And so the store imperative for growth, and as I mentioned, I'm sure that peppers after uh, tomatoes and cucumbers, given the challenging circumstances, by sanctions and payments. So it's made the cost of in difficulty of Russian uh, imported products for consumers difficult. So the domestic production of tomatoes uh, will continue. I'm sure uh, that will be followed by... <coughs> peppers and uh, ensures food security it means that pr prices are predictable and they're not at the uh, mercy of the markets each year sees the opening of new greenhouses for the cultivation of tomatoes i mean in the last year alone new greenhouse complexes have been launched in the leningrad region that's near st petersburg the dairy Pruli, stavropol Krai, the bashkortostan where i am it's called ecoculture and north ossetia which is in alania i mean Tomatoes are now showing high growth dynamics than cucumbers. I mean, between 2018 and 2023, production of greenhouse cucumbers increased uh, by only 16.5%, while tomatoes uh, grew up by over a third. Now, the profitability, I mean, the return on capital of greenhouse vegetables in 2023 reached an all-time high of 22.8%. That's exclusive of subsidies, of course. And that's created a favourable environment for the launch of new products. There's also been a growth in open ground tomato production that's outside of greenhouses. According to the Russian Ministry of Agriculture, tomato production has increased by 1.2 times over the last five years and has reached a record of 1.1 million tonnes. In closed ground, it's 1.7 times to 720,000 tonnes. So that's a fair old mix of being grown outside in places like Stavropol Krai which is a quite a warm region in the south, and they are, are a major producer of uh, tomato. Other regions are Krasnokoysk, Krai, Lipetsk, the Moscow region, Kaluga, Voronezh, and Tambov. I mean, these regions account for over 50% of the total volume. Astrakhan and Volgograd regions, along with the Balkarian Republic, are the primary contributors to the development of the open ground vegetable product production, mainly because of their climate. And they provide about 95% of the open ground tomatoes. Now, the main risks, obviously, to the growth of tomato production in open are weather conditions and the availability of seeds, given that Russia's seed development industry is still far from self-sufficiency. It's also worth uh, looking at the need to implement automated systems, not only for vegetable cultivation, but for the post-harvest operations such as sorting, packaging and label. And given that that's where the significant losses are incurred, is at that stage of particularly harvesting. So high-tech methods, including artificial intelligence, are needed to be employed in this process. And I've done a video on artificial intelligence and agriculture, so do watch that. The high cost of investment in tobacco production also represents a significant barrier so the state support that's uh, coming and has been in the, uh in the form of preferential loans is still very much important. And the farmers couldn't afford the levels of interest rates currently, so uh, tobacco production would be hampered. So the government's support is uh, definitely needed and it still needs to support investment in seed farming. So, I mean, without... Uh, achieving food security it's impossible unless you do it through the entire value chain including seed production also the industry faces a shortage of human capital and that's really got to be addressed by the training processes for agronomics uh, and plant protection specialists so as you can see russia's quest for food security and sovereignty continues as it invests heavily in its food production sector Producing high quality food for the people, affordable prices, I mean, so the country's not at the mercy of the agricultural multinationals that dominate and manipulate the markets around the world. So Russia is further on the way to its sovereignty and food independence. 
Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the website seobricksite.com by clicking the thanks button. Don't forget to uh, like and share. Please share with people who you think will benefit from watching this. Thank you.